You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Mark Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Donald Trump continues to double down on his attacks on Baltimore and Congressman Elijah Cummings. Today, Trump, Trump chose to go talk to the media on the White House lawn and is expected it was an absolute shit show. Now, Baltimore has been very badly mishandled for many years. As you know, Congressman Cummings has been there for a long time. He's had a very iron hand on it. It's a corrupt city. There's no question about it. All you have to do is look at the facts. Uh, the government has pumped in over the years billions and billions of dollars to no avail, to absolutely no avail. Uh, Baltimore is a... Uh, is an example of what corrupt government leads to. Billions of dollars have been given, and I feel so sorry for the people of Baltimore. And if they ask me, we will get involved. But we're already involved from the standpoint that over many years, billions and billions of dollars have been given to Baltimore. It's been misspent, it's been missing, it's been stolen with a lot of corrupt government. And as you know, uh, Cummings has been in charge. Now, I will say this. I think that Representative Cummings should take his oversight committee and start doing oversight on Baltimore. He'd find out some real things. And, of course, Trump chose to say he's been getting lots of phone calls from guess who? Baltimore and go tour it the right time I'll visit, but the people of Baltimore are very thankful. They have let us know by the thousands of people because of the fact that finally somebody is pointing out how corrupt Baltimore is, how billions and billions of dollars have been stolen. And the ones that like it the best what I'm doing are African-American voters. Those are the ones. Thank you. All right, folks, let's go to our panel, Kelly Bethea, communication strategist, Dr. Jason Nichols, Department of African American Studies uh, at the University of Maryland, and Melek Abdul, Vice President, Black Conservative Federation. Uh, Melek, I'll start with you. Donald Trump is claiming, oh, he's getting tons of phone calls from Baltimore. You never seem to ever uh, actually show proof of that. Let's just be real, uh, Melek. He is mad that Congressman Elijah Cummings is chairman of the House Oversight Committee and chose to actually subpoena folks uh, who Trump knows. So he wants to attack Cummings, and then he wants to, uh, with his attacks on Baltimore, and the Baltimore so bad, why, why are the Republicans actually going to Baltimore for their retreat, Melly? Well, I've, I, I don't know why they chose to go to Baltimore. Or, or I'll, I'll say I don't know when that decision was actually made to go to Baltimore, but I think they should go to Baltimore. They should go to any inner city around the country. I, I, don't, I don't particularly have a problem with that. I do know that um, Donald Trump was upset, if you want to call it that, at the way that the congressman actually handled the hearing with the, what was it, the CBD, CPB um, director. I, I do know that that's a lot of what was driving him. But the fact that he's making those, you know, this sort of commentary about Baltimore, you know, it is somewhat similar to what we've heard in not just Baltimore, but in other cities as well. I think what he actually said today is a much um, different approach than how he'd initially started out, when, which he was very hot in the language that he chose to use. So I think focusing on where he is now, I think that's actually a, probably a good space for him. But whether or not there were thousands of people who actually contacted him, I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that he's gotten some positive feedback and some criticism, from what I understand, from people who've met with him on just how he chooses to communicate his point of view. This man has lied before when it came to getting phone calls. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders lied when they, she said they heard from FBI agents. It was a lie. Jason Nichols, at the end of the day, what you have is you have a grown-ass man throwing a temper tantrum. He's upset that someone is not bowing to his will, and he's attacking, attacking, attacking. But also, he sounds absolutely ignorant and stupid. When you literally have Republicans who are going to for a retreat, they're in Baltimore. When you actually have... Uh, significant parts of Baltimore that are doing great. 
But the reality is this here. I can show you some rural parts of America run by Republicans that are broke as hell and that are horrible. So this attack on Baltimore is the usual shameful, despicable actions of a childish grown man, Jason. I think you, you just said it. Uh, as a matter of fact, the second poorest district, congressional district in the country is in Kentucky. It's uh, under Representative Hal Rogers. Uh, and that is the second poorest district in the country. Four of the five poorest uh, states in the nation are Republican states. And as a matter of fact, if he says that thousands of Baltimore residents have been calling him and saying that this is so great and they're African-American, let's just check out what the exit polls say in 2020 when he runs, uh, how, his, how well he does in Baltimore. The other thing is I will say is that I am one of the constituents of uh, Elijah Cummings. I live in the 7th District. And as a matter of fact, it is the second wealthiest Af majority African-American district in the country. So again, all of this is really because he's angry. He's throwing a temp temper tantrum. If he really wanted to fix Baltimore, he would come with solutions. But yet all it's been is vitriol. Kelly, the reality is he has no solutions. He has none. And unfortunately, the, ma the, the governor of that state has been too silent, Republican uh, Larry Hogan, with his both sides BS. And that's what you have here. And so what you see is a childish president who wants to rip folks because he's mad that they are doing their job. Absolutely. I can't comment on uh, government, uh, Governor Hogan's uh, stance on this, him, you know, straddling the fence, that's kind of his M.O., but I do know that he's on the record saying that he does not support this president, so his silence might just be uh, a delayed response. I'm not sure. Uh, regarding Trump's comments regarding Baltimore, uh, Cummings was uh, my representative for a very long time. In fact, I was his intern when I was in law school, so I have great respect for him, great respect for the district, and the nostalgia is there. However, I am frankly just tired of the distractions that this president has been putting in front of us regarding his rhetoric. We already know he's a racist. We already know that he's ignorant. We already know that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But what we do not know is what's actually happening in our administration. What we is what's not actually being discussed is the fact that he's uh, suing the Ways and Means Committee. The stuff that's not being discussed is the fact that we have, you know, basically internment camps at the border that he's supporting and not saying anything on. We have actual issues that we need to talk about and him being a racist shouldn't be one of them because we've been there, done that. At the end of the day, Malik, what you're seeing here is, again, a childish man who doesn't know how to govern who doesn't know how to communicate, and all he wants to do is attack as opposed to lead. And so we could literally go all across America. I mean, we can go to his own. Uh, this is a guy who actually called the cops to arrest homeless folks uh, who were actually uh, on the streets outside of his building, and so he didn't want them on Fifth Avenue. I mean, this is what you're dealing with, a callous individual who doesn't know how to lead, and all he knows how to do is trash people and where in the hell is the first lady uh, who, with her anti-bullying campaign? <laughs> when is she going to walk across the hall, because they don't sleep in the same bed, when is she going to walk across the hall and say, hey, grown-ass man, act like one? Well, I don't think that we need to involve the first lady in this. I don't think that we need to make any sort of observations or comments. Wait a minute. Does she not have comments. an anti-bully campaign? Think, I don't think that we need to Does make she any not have comments an anti -bully on what campaign? goes on in their bedroom, just like they, she, we shouldn't comment on what goes on in anyone's bedroom. But to your point about Donald Does Trump. Does she not have an anti-bully whether, campaign? Whether, whether, whether that or not, you don't have to, you don't the, have to the, throw Malik, the first lady. Does she have an anti-bully campaign? You don't have to campaign. throw the first lady actually into this. The first lady's anti-bullying campaign should actually apply. I Why think, not? I think across the the board that politicians, um, celebrities, leaders in the community need to elevate their own language in addition to Donald Trump. They need to learn to elevate their own language. This just doesn't start or end with who Donald they? Trump. They, no, no, no. Who is they? They, they whether it's whether it's, they? whether it's other politicians, whether it's people in the media, whether it's no, celebrities. No, who's they? No, no, no. I need names. See, no, 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 no. Well, sir, I, I, Malik, I don't play so this game. I, I, I don't play so this Maxine game. Maxine Waters, both Maxine sides, Waters, all Kamala Harris, who Corey is Booker, they? Maxine Waters, Kamala Harris, 
Cory Booker, what representative, are they representative that is even the language, degrading but the as language that they use, the language that they use is part of what we're talking about when we talk about this toxic culture that we have here. So to say that they don't contribute BS. to it is ridiculous. I mean, BS. and this notion that somehow, Jason. well, we can't talk about Baltimore, but we can talk about places like, for instance, Mississippi. I mean, we're often talking about places that Republicans have, but that's the conversation going on now. What's happening what in red states? About? I don't think that we Who need to have those. Mississippi? Well, I know. I said I gave that as Who an example. I gave that as an example of the conversations that the national conversations that we have about places that are particularly red states. So we generally have these type of conversations. Yes, Donald Trump should actually be mindful of how his comments are actually coming across to people in these areas. But the notion that people aren't going around talking about other cities, that's just false. It's just not true at all. You know, Jason, that's a little, th th Jason, that's a little BS dance. You're it's not a BS dance. Here. You just don't like to hear it because that means no, it is a BS dance. That means that, means no, that, no, you're, it's a, that, it's means that you're spreading dance. it around. It's a BS of course, dance you're going to focus when, on Republicans this, because it benefits your, your politics. When, I no, get it's it. a BS dance, Melik. It's a BS dance when a guy you voted for. Yeah, and I'm going to vote for again in 2020. infestation. No, allow me. Any the guy you voted for mm -hmm. and the guy you're going to vote for again. Absolutely. Whenever he discusses infestation, whenever he discusses rats and rodents, it's always black and brown people. Jason, not San Francisco. It's always black and brown people. Absolutely. Jason, go ahead. No, Jason, go I mean, ahead. That, that, that's very true. Jason, um, go ahead. But but one thing I, I will say uh, is that I'm not going to cape for some of the uh, politicians in Baltimore who've been there for years who have made some serious errors and mistakes. So I, I don't want to sit here and make it sound like I'm I'm uh, on their side. There has been you know there have been mistakes making. I wouldn't put Elijah Cummings necessarily in that category, but there are some uh, p politicians in Baltimore. I don't think oh, they're absolutely. lining their pockets with billions of dollars. I don't think that's happening. I think that they've tried to find solutions. But Jason, but, but you Jason, can't do that it's with... also dealing with facts, Jason. Yeah. No, I, I agree. But let's let's, deal, in let's deal in facts. This man and, stood there. And, Jason. Yes. Jason, this man stood there and say Elijah Cummings, he runs the city yeah, that, with that's Iron Hand. Yeah, that's completely and patently false. That's absolutely false. And, and I think... And then, and then... It, it didn't start with Elijah Cummings up. in 1996. It's institutional racism. Let's it's expose the other lies. Industrial, deindustrialization. It's war on drugs. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What are you saying? Let's expose the other lies. Okay? okay. He acts as if Johns Hopkins is not there. He acts as if the Under Armour CEO... Okay, who is from Baltimore, who's from Maryland, headquarters are in Baltimore, who met with Trump. So if Baltimore is so bad, see this is what they do. The same thing happened when uh, when when uh, Freddie Gray took place. They were like, oh my God, Baltimore is on fire. No, Baltimore wasn't on fire. There were three blocks that were on fire, but Baltimore wasn't on fire. But this is the game they play, Jason and Kelly, where they want to all of a sudden say, oh my God, it's all bad, it's all woeful, it's all trash, it's all corrupt. When New Trump hails from a state where the governor had to resign because he was with prostitutes. Come on, man. Again, the hypocrisy has always been there. I. I can't disagree with you. It's it's the truth, you know. With it is uh, specifically uh, with Freddie Gray. I was there. Like I was one of those few blocks that could see the smoke going up. Like my Rite Aid, the one that I frequent, was the one that burned down. So I understand uh, the Baltimore uprising. We call it the uprising because of what it stood for. So I get it. But what I don't understand is the hyperbole, the hypocrisy, the lying. It's just not necessary. But this president isn't necessary, so we we have to deal with that too. And what is shameful? And what is shameful? And what is shameful? Uh, to have individuals who excuse all of this, who say, "Oh yeah, I'm going to vote for him," who don't, who who clearly don't mind him being despicable, who don't mind his shameful behavior, who don't mind his racist. And attacks, none of what you're saying is going to change anyone's lying. opinion about voting for him, Rose. Hey, 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 not, not, none of those insults are going to change anyone's opinion about can, can whether I, or not they're going to support Donald Trump. So you can call him liberal. You can, you can call him. You can call him anything that you want to call him, and it's not going to change anyone's let opinion. Say who's going to vote for him? Roll, just as the same. It's not going to go in the other direction. So you can call him despicable from today all the way up until the end of the week. It's not going to change anyone's position on whether or not they're going to vote for him. But that's the tragedy of it all. 
what? That is the well, outrage. But Roland doesn't, but Roland doesn't well, what dictate votes. Roland Who doesn't Roland dictate votes. Well, wait a minute. Roland is wait one minute. person. Allow me to finish. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. What does it say about the individual who doesn't have a problem with lying, who doesn't have a problem with him being degrading, who doesn't have a problem with his shameful tweets, who doesn't have a problem with how he attacks It means people. that they can make who decisions for themselves with without what rolling dictating that on what they, what they can what, It means that they can make decisions for themselves without rolling and giving them the go-ahead to do so. So that, that's, no, why, it, we that's why we can. That's why we can. It means that rolling has an opinion about it, and it doesn't matter. It, well, it doesn't matter what your opinion is about me, Donald Trump, or anyone who supports put, supports him, because it doesn't matter. This this is your position. This is going to be your position. Oh no, it does you matter. Think, you know it doesn't. It actually doesn't matter it because does in matter. November of twenty twenty, what if we come? And it does not matter. What if we what Jason, if we come ahead. with facts? Right. What if we come about with what, facts what, about, about, Donald about, about Donald Trump and and his corruption and about Donald Trump and his racism? But what corruption? Would you would you be willing to change your vote? But what if, if we were you, able? You have to show it if we were able. To come with facts, but you have like, to show it to me like, first. I can that show you that he said I some can, bad things about Baltimore is not going to be. A no, no, no. I, I can show you we the Mueller report, of drug, obstruction what of about justice. The report? I can, is he, I can show you obstruction of justice. I can show. But, impeach him. But that, that's not. I'm talking about your vote. But, right, is, my is, vote. But is, but, is there anything but, that would alter your vote? And, and as we've had this conversation before, at this point, no. Who wow. knows what may happen tomorrow, Whew. next month, or anything? But Whew. because Jason doesn't like him, because Jason thinks that he's a no, boy, that's not, not what I'm saying. I'm anything. saying so if you, you are presented because he because of the, the I, Mueller report, I'm, oh, I'm well, saying if you are presented, I'm saying report. if you are presented with it's new not. information. But what new information? But you're, you're not like no, anything. no. We get new information daily about how corrupt this president is. That have been here forever, so you haven't produced anything new. I, I mean, wow. I, if, the, if fact, you're... the fact, the fact, the fact, the fact that somebody could literally sit here and with all the crap this dude has done, mm -hmm. with all of the despicable cabinet secretaries who have been corrupt and still said I'm going to vote for him, that's shameful. Well, all you, right, you can call my shameful, next story. but your opinion well, doesn't matter. Story. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at more than $340 billion. We know that marijuana legalization is sweeping, sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill changed all of that, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S., thus creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all of the plants. And, folks, this is where our friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed, high-paying tenants. That's right, they are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. Our friends at 420 Real Estate decided to do something special for the Roland Martin Unfiltered family. Originally, the minimum investment level was 500 bucks, but right now you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as $200. That's right, 200 up to $10,000. Let me recap. This is a $340 billion industry that is still growing, and you can participate with as little as $200. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.